What's going on everybody? It's the Kingfisher 745 and before we get into some new gameplay I do have a question for you. Right now I do have a new microphone and different audio settings so please let me know if you like this better than what you're used to. Now the game that I will be playing today is called Infinity Wars and according to Steam it's an animated trading card game. I'll be honest with you I've never played this before but I am a big fan of CCGs or TCGs and that stands for collectible card games or trading card games. I really like the strategy of trading card games. You have to build your own deck and completely come up with your own strategy. Well I suppose you could just copy a deck list. But if you don't do that and you come up with your own deck, you get to create it from scratch and then you also get the strategy of actually playing the cards and playing your deck. For me that's just always been a great way to spend time. And it's also a way to really get you thinking quite a bit and get those creative juices flowing. But enough of my own personal reasons, we're going to go ahead and get right into the action, which of course is going to start with the beginning tutorial. So let's go ahead and get a sense of how you play Infinity Wars. Then afterwards I'll give you my first impressions. Alright so the objective is pretty simple, your goal is to reduce your opponent's health or morale to zero. At the bottom of your screen you see your hand. You can choose any card and play it. But speaking from general experience, there are going to be cards that you won't be able to play right away. All of these particular cards have a 1, so I'm assuming that's why we can play them first turn. Apparently after you click a card you do get a close up look at it, and then you must click play card directly to the right of it. This will put that card wherever it belongs, usually in the support zone. That's all you can do for this turn, so now you can feel free to click end turn, which you can find in the top right corner of the screen. Right underneath your name on the screen you can see your number of resources. It starts by 1 and I believe typically goes up by 1 each turn. The big number on the top of each card represents the number of resources it costs to play. So our opponent Aletta also played a 1 cost character called the Soldier of Fortune. Since there were no characters in the assault zone, we went to the next turn and we drew our next card. This time we drew the Knight of the Flame Dawn and it's a 2 resource character card. Luckily on our second turn we do now have two resources. That means we can either play that card or play both of the one cost character cards. And sorry I just wanted to adjust the sound really fast. Okay now let us pretty much telling you what I just said about the resources. Now that we have two resources I do have a choice to make. I can either play a higher cost character at the cost of two resources or I could play two characters at a lower cost but they are weaker individually. Since there's no threat of attack yet, I'm going to go ahead and wait. Alright, so now she's explaining how characters come into play in the support zone. The character card that we played last turn can now be moved to the assault zone where he can attack or to the defense zone where he can defend us. I'm of course going to choose to attack first. I'm a firm believer in the best defense is a strong offense. But apparently the twist is your opponent can choose to go to the attack zone or defense zone himself or herself whatever the case may be. Right here we're reminded that the opponent is going through the same steps as us. Until we both click end turn we can't see the actions of the other player. So I don't know if they're going to attack or defend. This does add a layer to the combat and you certainly have to calculate for what your opponent's going to do. They chose to move their soldier of fortune to the defense zone so we fought each other. Each card dealt their attack to each other's defense and the original values were a 4-4 versus a 2-7. So now their character is missing 4 off of their defense and we're missing 2 off of ours. Now we drew a tech knight which is a 3 cost character and we do happen to have 3 resources exactly. Once again we could play 2 character cards and be left with a resource or we can play our 3 cost tech knight. I'm going to play the tech knight and then I can move the knight of the flame dawn from my support zone to my defense or assault. Since I don't have a defender yet I'm going to move him to my defense zone. Aletta played the card defense golem. It has 0 attack but 25 defense. So this thing is quite a wall it's going to take a while to punch through. That is at least once it activates. Our torchbearer once again fights the soldier of fortune and this time they knock each other out. So now we draw a non-character card and that's the first we've seen of that. 
It's an ability card called Stumble. When you play an ability card, you choose a target, and during the resolution phase, it will carry out the effect. So fair enough, it looks like it can help us out with that golem. But now we get to play both of our Flame Dawn footmen. And then we also get to play that ability card, because we do have enough resources. And this particular ability says return target character in a combat zone to its support zone. So we targeted the golem, and I do believe it's going to take effect whenever he moves out. At least that's what I'm hoping happens. Now we get to move our tech knight up, and also if we wanted we could move the knight of the flame dawn from the defense zone to the assault, or back to the support zone. Our opponent Aletta is apparently playing a ton of unending drones. So this is a little bit scary, but they are quite weak at only a 2-2. In other words, 2 attack and 2 defense. Also, they are currently only in the support zone, so they have to wait their turn to come out. And since I believe it is the resolution phase, Stumble now takes effect on the defense golem. This sends it back to the support zone, so now they have no defenders, and we can break through untouched. That means that our tech knight is going to deal his damage to their fortress. And his attack, I believe, is 6. So yes, it will deal 6 damage. Now the turn is going to end, and we draw our next card. It's going to be another Torchbearer. Also, we receive a message that says one of our commanders has arrived. Commanders are special cards, and can be played directly to the Assault or Defense Zone. And it looks like he's a 10-10, so that's a pretty amazing card. Besides that, he also gives a plus 2, plus 0 to characters in my attacking zone. So since my attack is looking pretty good right now, I'm going to go ahead and boost my defense. But let's not go crazy. We're going to go ahead and add this one to my attack as well. And also, before we forget, we can play that Torchbearer as well. So that's the end of our resources, and it's time to hit end turn. Let's see what Aletta does. She moved up her unending drones and her golem and played a Tech Knight. So now on to the combat. And this should be pretty interesting, but that defense golem's going to absorb most of our damage. Still, the impressive thing is we are going to manage to take him out in one turn. The footman should finish him off. And then two of their unending golems are going to attack our defense. That's going to be an easy victory for us. We have a much stronger defense. They are only two twos after all. Now with our next draw phase, we draw a location card. This is the third type of card that we've encountered. So this is pretty interesting, but we do have enough resources to play it. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Wow, okay, the first thing it did was it transformed our side of the board. And now let's go ahead and read it carefully. At the end of each turn, create a 4-2 Flame Dawn Aspirant in the Assault Zone. So this location is going to be pumping out attackers for us. That's pretty awesome and should allow us to overrun the defense. Aletta plays another Tech Knight. And currently she has no attacking characters and a pretty weak defense. Our first three attackers will kill their defenders and then the rest will break through. So that should be another six damage to their fortress. Also, since they only have a tech knight in their support zone, next turn they're going to take a lot more damage. Oh, and now we got a pretty cool unique character. It costs seven resources. It says it has charge and also can evolve. I really don't know what that means right now, so hopefully they explain it. And here comes Aletta. It says this card has charge, and characters with charge are moved directly to the assault zone. It also has evolve, so it can evolve into another card, retaining buffs and debuffs. I have to admit, I still don't know what that means. Hopefully I can figure it out before this one ends, but we're going to do a ton of damage right now. As you can see, their health bar is going down a ton. It dropped all the way to 25. We did 57 damage in one turn. Also, for some weird reason, they put their Tech Knight on attack. No matter what, we're going to win this next turn, so let's try and evolve this character. We clicked on it, and she once again tells us it has charge, and it has evolve. But I still have no idea how to evolve it. So I'm looking on the card, and I don't see anything. But it is a legendary. You can see that down in the left corner. And that basically tells you the rarity of the card. But yeah, unfortunately I don't think I'm going to figure this one out right now. I'll let you know as soon as I find out and probably in a later video. This next card has flying so it can only be blocked by other characters with flying. 
That makes perfect sense to me, so let's go ahead and play him in the support zone. And now, regardless, we're going to finish this battle, and it is going to be a win. Aletta has no defense, and we have a pretty high attack power. We deal 63 damage and take her well below zero. That's what I call an epic overkill. And we get some nice little effects. And there it shows negative 38 to 100 health. Now you can also lose apparently because of morale. That seems to revolve around how many characters you get killed because they all have a morale cost. Oh, and now we get to go to the store and claim our free reward. By the way, this game is free to play. And I assume you can earn reward cards as well as packs. And after you complete the tutorial, they give you a free deck. So there's our starter deck, and we'll go ahead and open it. Let's briefly check out the contents and then we'll wrap this one up. First, we get an ability card called Assassinate. Kill target character, and your max resources decreases by two. So I believe we got two of those. Next, the Defense Golem. We know about him being awesome on defense. He's followed by a Flame Dawn Footman, while Footmen... In fact, you get quite a few of those. Then a Knight of the Flame Dawn. That's another character we're familiar with. Times two. The Tech Knight. And besides being a 6-7, he can heal himself when you place him in the support zone. And let's see how many of him we get. Alright, so that's two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, apparently you can have more than four of one card. So I think the final total was 8 Tech Knights. Then we get a Stumble Ability card, or I should say 2 of them, an Aerial Commando, and hopefully we get a few of him because I do like Flyers. Okay, we got 2 exactly, then a Flame Dawn Aspirant, and it has Charge, so that's pretty cool. That means that they go straight to your Assault Zone. That's really great that you get to skip the weight, and apparently we're getting quite a few of him as well. I actually lost track of how many we have, so if you can tell me, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. Next, another familiar face, it's a torchbearer. And I'm sure we'll have a few of these as well. Okay, apparently I was completely wrong. Instead, we have another ability card called the Crusade. It's kind of costly, but if you have those resources to spare, you might as well use them. Next, we have a mortar cannon. It says pay 3, exhaust, and it deals damage, 8 damage in fact, to the enemy player's fortress. That's pretty interesting and it also will go around defenses apparently. Then we have another ability card called exhaust, a soldier of fortune, which is another 1 resource cost character, times 2, then a magic ability card called firebolt, which deals 4 damage to a target character. Next to last, we have a Vicious Ransacker. It seems like a pretty decent uncommon character. And then I'm really interested in seeing what this shiny card is. Okay, it's a rare location card, and we did get to see that used in the game. I liked it. I think it's a good card, and that's pretty cool that they gave us a whole deck. But I guess we did need one to play with. Still, you can earn more cards by playing the game and unlocking more booster packs, as well as singles. Like I said, the game is free to play, but if you want, you can buy packs with money. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I will check back in with this game from time to time, and after I get plenty of experience, I'll give you a big review. Lastly, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and if you want to see more videos, please like, comment, and subscribe.